So we're here today to understand the relevance of project-based learning to the MFL classroom. It's uh, possibly one of the contexts where it's most relevant. We're going to get into some ideas for using project-based learning and we've got one special expert here to join us to help us do that. But as well as that, hopefully uh, at the end you'll have time to kind of connect and discuss and debate this with colleagues. For those of you who just joined us, we've got um, a handout and introduction to project-based learning attached, which you're welcome to use as well. Um, that's um, all I have to say. I'm going to frame slightly and then I'm going to welcome Pamela from Homewood School, who's joined us, who's a real expert in this. So thank you very much, Pamela, for joining us. Uh, so the, the the frame really for the um, session is just kind of why whole education is focused on this, is that we're leading the language futures approach to MFL teaching uh, in, in the curriculum. And project-based learning is really foundational for uh, language futures. Uh, you can see there's kind of four, hopefully you can see the screen here, um, four main tenets for language futures. Project-based learning is one of them. We've also got extended learning relationships, so beyond the just teacher and student, uh, school being the base camp but learning happening everywhere else, and school being a learning commons, so being democratic and collaborative with student choice. The main choice is uh, over which language they learn, so <laughs> language teachers, students can, they, they must find a language mentor who speaks their language, um, another a, a peer studying it, and uh, some good quality websites and textbooks, and then they're allowed to choose their language. So this is really, project-based learning is really important for that, because if you've got students all learning different languages, projects, uh, setting your lessons up uh, through projects, really, really helps with that. Um, but project-based learning has relevance, obviously, outside of uh, just language futures as well. So I hope that this will be really useful to those of you who, who started language futures or are thinking of doing, but also to languages teachers who just know that um, project-based learning could help outside of that context too. Um, anyway, that's definitely more than enough from me. Um, I'd like to introduce Pamela, and again, thank you very much, Pamela. And would you like me to share your screen now? Uh, yes, that should be fine. Great. Uh, so I'm going to make you the presenter, and you should have an invitation now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I hope you can see my screen. I'd quite like to put it a uh, full screen to make it easier. Can everyone see it completely or? Uh, let's have a look. Ah, oh, yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Should I start? Yes, please do. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, good afternoon everyone, uh, I'm Pam, uh, I'm the MFL Key Stage 3 Coordinator um, at Homewood School in Kent and um, I have been working on PBL for my leadership development program uh, for the MPQML, if anyone's done it or heard of it, so that's why I can um, tell you a bit, a bit about this today. Uh, I'll give you a short introduction uh, about uh, project-based learning for those who don't know too much about it and I'll explain what we've been doing. Um, so, um, according to the uh, Buck Institute for Education, project-based learning is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an enga engaging question. So, critical thinking, collaboration and self-management are part of the lifelong skills acquired by pupils. So, um, the pupils are encouraged to do some research and queries about an authentic context, which works really well for languages. Um, pupils also become decision makers and they reflect on each other's choices in order to improve um, their and others' work as well over time during a critique session, which you can see on the screen hopefully, um, where the feedback is being shared. And finally, the pupils um, exhibit their final products uh, to an audience. All in all, the multiple drafting and feedback and improvements, uh, improvement sessions, sorry, um, um, they are always ensuring that the main focus is on the uh, initial essential question and they encourage pupil to pupils to take ownership of their work and also show pride about their work when they are presenting the final product. Um, so this so-called learning journey I've just mentioned um, has been developed by teachers from the innovation unit from High Tech High in California um, such as John Bosserman who I've been collaborating with. 
Um, so I felt it was important to try out PBL um, in languages because um, varying activities and responding to pupils' needs could increase the uptake in languages for GCSE and also on a long-term basis um, in the A-levels uptake. Um, it's also part of, of STED's report that the Key Stage 3 curriculum should be skillsfully designed to, um, match, uh, to match the full range of pupils' needs and to ensure highly effective continuity and progression in their learning. Also, in addition to this, from September 2014, the new Key Stage 2 MFL curriculum requires that pupils should communicate for practical purposes and learn new ways of thinking. Consequently, pupils who then go to Key Stage 3 from primary school have a different or even a grammar-based approach to languages learning and PBL allows them to work within a wide range of skills, allowing, um, including self-assessment and teamwork. Moreover, Key Stage 3 MFL teachers have to keep up with a more advanced curriculum and still be creative as well as inspiring um, whilst encouraging pupils' independence. And similarly, the new GCSE requirements include a more grammatical approach to language learning, and we found that PBL is quite um, a, a good approach for this. Um, so, in order to match uh, PBL with uh, MFL skills, we decided uh, last year that uh, Year 7 pupils would work um, on how they could create a revision game for Year 8, uh, which would effectively challenge their knowledge and learning skills, as well as engage them. So at the same time I'm just showing you some photos that we've been taking during the creations of the game, the creation of the game, sorry. So we did this in February last year, so in winter term for us, um, and pupils were in groups of four maximum. So um, I started with asking um, our French and German uh, foreign language assistants to write up lists of vocabulary from um, autumn term, and uh, we reused these lists to create um, helping booklets. And um, also it's important to have uh, some knowledge um, about SEN, um, so if you have someone in your depa department who's good um, at this, it, it really helps uh, to ensure that the booklets were appropriately differentiated. Um, then I asked a selection of uh, very motivated pupils to do a round robin um, to, about board games that they enjoyed and that they had to tell us which ones they thought would, it would be possible to create, or for pupils to create in the lesson, and with which uh, resources. Um, and then I, I ordered all the I ordered sorry all the resources we needed. And then it's important that you share everything with your department. So uh, obviously, so I did um, a department meeting during which I presented the finalized scheme of work to my colleagues and explained what what PBL was, uh, how our previous lessons related to PBL, um, what the benefits of trying out this strategy were, and what expected them to do. Um, so when we started this first PBL about revision games from year 7 to year 8, um, it had a direct impact about, uh, upon improving languages learning. Um, it also allowed pupils to develop skills such as creativity, resilience, group work, independent work, self-assessment, peer assessment, as well as reflecting on their own understanding of their chosen topic or the grammatical points that they wanted to, um, to make the game about so that it would be as successful as possible. So they took pride in their work and the, exhi the exhibition part reflected their uh, motivation when they went to see the year eights and make them, made them play their games and explain the rules and everything. Um, and the PBL also had a great impact on teaching as we worked as a team to ensure that we would offer high quality teaching regarding this new way of working with our pupils. And although it was a new teaching method that all staff were not necessarily confident with, I kept my colleagues motivated by being available for advice and drop-ins whenever needed. And I also regularly shared, shared good practice with them and encouraged staff to often share successes and to give each other advice and motivational comments about how it went with our classes. So, despite this project having its defaults, as well as, uh, as all new launched activity might have, I kept energizing and motivating staff on a daily basis. I did the same with some pupils who were complaining about preferring our usual lessons, taught by teachers rather than taught by themselves, and convinced them it was worth trying by explaining the beneficial languages, personal and social skills they were getting from them. Um, also, I ensured I had clear expectations from my colleagues and pupils and led by examples and I made sure that everyone fully understood the vision behind the project. So it's really important if you um, want to make your own PBL that you, you're very clear about the aims and all the different steps from the start and 
that's why a scheme of work is really important. Um, so our aim was that pupils would see this project as a creative way to learn, practice and rediscover what they had been taught under a new angle. This approach required them to be teachers themselves. So for instance, when they were explaining their games to us and then to year eight pupils, um, helping, with, helping them with hints or re-explaining a grammat uh, grammatical point. So this was challenging and our, our own teaching methods were reflected in some of the children's ways of explaining their games. So after this positive first experience, in summer term, um, we launched our second PBL. Um, it was more based on a cultural approach. Um, so for, it was about um, countries speaking the target language with, um, and we have been given, um, giving a clear success, success criteria, sorry. And there were less ways of making the final product than uh, with the revision games. Um, but the element of fun was still there, although it was less based on crafts and lacked the feeling of ownership uh, of, a, of a unique creation. So it seems to have appealed to a different type of pupils, mostly the ones who are not in favor of crafted projects. Um, as a consequence, it would be good to have a, bal a balance between diverse types of projects or to offer a choice between manual and academic outcomes um, within the same PBL, which we realized when we did one, the first one being a crafty one and then the second one being more um, academic with research. Um, so I feel that one of the most important, important things to remember is to be enthusiastic no matter what. Um, so as long as you have a clear and strong vision and can explain it confidently and show you trust the project, your, colle your colleagues will agree with you and the pupils as well. So you have to be aware of many aspects to take into account, such as pupils' abilities, social and ethical um, backgrounds, SEN, FSM, um, pu pu uh, pupil premium, boys and girls, etc. because they have obviously uh, many different ways of learning. Um, so I have created questionnaires for pupils. Um, and I've been making um, a distinction between the, di the different factors to take into account, the ones I've just said. Um, so overall, pupils have been enthusiastic about um, starting the project. Um, in all cases, apart from key skills, um, our uh, lower stability pupils, um, more than 50% had a positive attitude regarding change. Um, in seven classes out of 13 in total, uh, girls have been more receptive than boys. And also, in one of the top set French classes, 100% of the pupils have been enthusiastic about doing projects. Um, in all classes, some pupils were not happy about, doing, about not doing normal lessons, and some comments um, include that they were nervous and afraid it might be difficult. But um, these less positive answers were lower than 30%, and they come from boys rather than girls. So this can suggest that girls feel more confident to work independently and in some comments they say they like to be in charge of their work and, and one girl uh, in key skills also said that she loved being the teacher. Um, so especially in one of the, the top set French, pupils enjoy the idea of showing off their, their knowledge and to be able to explain to um, older pupils as well. Um, so I was also pleased to know that uh, all free school males and gifted and talented pupils in the key skill classes were um, motivated by the project and 63% of SEM and the statistics show that the majority of the pupils were happy to work independently but still some also suggest that teachers help is still needed so you're not going to be teaching from the front of the classroom, you'll be going around um, so lessons are planned obviously in advance, but you have to plan quite a few of them in advance and adapt to um, what the pupils have reached. Um, but you, you shouldn't be standing, uh, you shouldn't um, let the pupils do their own work. Um, so one fact I found quite interesting is that some pupils said that they felt less confident with how to reach a level four. Um, so for us, and I'm sure for you as well, um, it's about being able to um, produce opinions um, in a sentence. And that was uh, achieve, achievable by the end of Christmas term, so they were able to do opinions, or they should have been able to by the time we did the PBL. Um, so they felt that they were less confident after the project than before, so that could suggest that pupils thought that they had understood how to reach level four, but found it harder when they were working on them independently. However, seven classes, so more than half, felt more confident after the project, including two top sets, which is a good sign for the future, as hopefully this revision will have secured skills to achieve a level four for them. Um, so since then, so as I said, it was last year, 
um, we came out with one PBL per term um, using a range of topics and um, creative ideas um, such as a PBL on come dine with me for your eights uh, with a character creation and then performing a, a dinner contest. Uh, we have um, we have the seven doing fairy tales as well. So they've been uh, writing their own fairy tales, and they were differentiated. So, for instance, the memorable pupils um, have been writing a paragraph, and the foundation pupils have been doing a comic strip. Um, for Christmas, pupils have um, have used uh, a storyboard app on their iPad to um, relate their, Christ uh, their Christmas routine only using their knowledge of regular verb conjugation because we've from this year we've started to um, have a completely um, grammar-based approach um, in our new schemes of work. So they've, they've only been learning how to conjugate verbs and the, the vocabulary comes after. And they've done, they've done really well uh, on this. Um, so we also created projects about um, creating and exhibiting film trailers for year eight. Uh, we've done TripAdvisor and Airbnb web pages. Um, as well as town brochures for Year 7, which also increased their IT skills because um, they were doing it on iPads or computers. Um, also in German, pupils have been creating health product um, advertising and they had to uh, make the products themselves and also an explanatory brochure. Um, and pupils um, have since uh, been used to working on a project for a term and exhibited at the end. Um, sadly, we have never been able to do a really so a real public exhibition, and we restrained ourselves uh, to school, which is mainly due to um, a, a lack of time to organize it. So our next steps would be to try and ensure that the exhibition can require a bigger audience um, outside school, if possible, or at least we'd like to be able to welcome parents during the day or primary schools to come and discover pupils' work. Um, and also to give our pupils a chance to talk about their work as well. And also we can always do better in terms of differentiation um, in order to provide work which is accessible and engaging to, uh, for all pupils. So um, thank you for listening. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks very much, Pamela. That's brilliant. And um, I, I don't know if you can uh, see the question function that we've got up. We've got uh, some comments from Susie throughout, which have been uh, really, really helpful. And I'll, I'll send you to them later. But one of the the key things that I, I know a lot of people have said is that creativity is that really it's a really key element of teaching Key Stage Three, and that's certainly come out through all of the examples of the ideas that you've got. Um, uh, I, I remind everyone that you're mostly um, muted yourselves, so if you have got a question, do feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Um, Isabel, I'm just going to unmute you. You had a bit of background noise, so I muted you from my end, so I'm going to unmute you. Right, mind. Um, I've got a couple of questions written down, but does anyone uh, have any questions now for Pam? Hear various different rumblings. Okay, so um, Susie's asked, um, do do you know of any primary schools who do project-based learning? Um, that's interesting. So we know of a few at Whole Education, um, and certainly I could send you some um, ideas of kind of schools who are doing project-based learning well. Um, definitely, Pam. Do you know any? I, I know that um, Homewood School works quite closely with the Tenterden Rural Alliance. I don't know if you work with the project-based learning kind of work on that? We have just started to be part of the Turn to the Rural, uh, Rural Alliance, so we, uh, we, we will definitely make sure that primary schools um, do also start doing project-based learning as we do learn on most subjects now. Um, from what I've heard, because I'm also uh, responsible for the transition in case they turn three, and we have mentioned uh, PBL to them, and um, the latest they've said is that they, they haven't um, really been doing them, um, mostly because um, they are trying to follow 
you know, all the new programs and everything, and they're trying to keep, um, you know, obviously um, keep up to date with um, the new approach and everything. But I'm sure that now that we're quite um, quite quite good at you know developing um, PBLs, we can we can share with them and do uh, PBLs which are more adapted to their to their um, teaching and learning. But at the moment, no. But it's quite it's quite interesting. I'd be quite interested in knowing if if some primary schools um, are doing it and what they do it on because quite a good. Um, question. Yeah, um, it, it's funny that um, project-based learning often looks a, a little bit different at primary. As you say, the, um, yeah, it, it's quite a, a challenging area. I know that often we call it inquiry-based learning and we've got kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, Susie's mentioned it's, you know, the non-subject specialists. So it can be quite quite a lot of change at once. But actually, I think um, project-based mm -hmm. learning, if anything, is more natural at primary where you have not non non-specialists in every subject all the time. Um, yes. uh, we, I know that um, if anyone's coming to our summer conference, we actually have a primary specific session with um, kind of expert input from the innovation unit who've done all the re real project-based learning and I think three of our primary schools. So it's called the Many Faces of Inquiry-Based Learning and that's um, going to be about project-based learning. So that's uh, next Tuesday in Doncaster. So Susie, if you were free, that might be interesting. Um, I've got a couple more questions. I've got a hand up from John. Um, Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I just have one question. Um, I just want to make sure I understood it correctly. Um, you said, I think, that you use it mainly toward the end of a topic as a revision. Is that correct? Am I correct in saying that? Well, it's um, we've been doing... Uh, um, revision games the very first time, so when we were just starting PBLs and it would need to school, not just two languages. Um, but we tend to do it at the end of terms, which we haven't always been um, thinking about doing because we, we have also thought about doing um, a term on PBL rather than uh, teaching the content and then doing the assessment and then doing the PBL. But we've just chosen to do it this way um, at the moment um, to uh, just because of our new schemes of work, as we've changed pretty much all the schemes of work this this year, and um, so I still really wanted PBL to be in them, um, but um, but my department has been asking if we could um, just just uh, just have PBL, but more after the assessments have been done rather than before. But um, yeah. if you're thinking about, or if you have yourself um, done uh, in the past, maybe um, if you've done them before, or if you're lucky enough. You know, not to have to do an assessment one term or something, then yeah. I think that definitely better. And I would really like to try this one day as well. Um, yeah. Do you have any um, do you have any hints about this? Any explain experience or of not no, doing I, it? At I was yeah, I was more asking the question because last year I tried to do an inquiry-based kind of punk learning style um, project with my students, and I found that they gained loads of knowledge. However. <laughs> It didn't really reflect the new GCSE because obviously the students need to be able to talk an awful lot in the target yes. language. And I found that their understanding was really deep, um, and they they broadened kind of their vocabulary and all that. However, when it came to actually being able to use the target language, I found that I got less out of it. Um, so I wonder yes. if there was any way you could help me structure that, or do you have any tips or anything like that? Um, well, that's that, that's mainly why we have you know, waited for the end of term to make sure that this target language would be present because they can yeah. then refer to what they have in their books. But one one thing we have, because um, I mentioned that the very first PBL, we've, we've done it in winter term at the end of it, but the plan was to do it at the start. And we changed up, uh, we changed our mind just because of, uh, just for another reason. But um, it, I think you have to uh, have covered the target language, at least yeah. in the previous term, I think. And then I think it's an amazing idea to start on the first day, so to start with a project when you come after the, uh, the half term or something, um, with a sort of um, you know, the pressure of what they have left before. Um, because otherwise, yes, you'll find that they won't, uh, they won't use the target language, of course. Um, mm. But uh, I would say, um, otherwise, the, um, the, the booklets that we've been using for our first one, because we've, we've only used that vocabulary booklet for the first one uh, we've made, um, that was very helpful because we spent a couple, just a couple of lessons doing them. Um, yeah. There was completely independent work. They all had one booklet according to their levels and everything. Um, okay. And then whatever they 
if they could um, look back into it. Um, I have to say, for the next project we've made, we have we have always um, repeat, you know, done core repetition or, or just given them lists of vocab or something. Um, yeah. Just because obviously it's meant to be in six or seven lessons, um, you know, maximum because you can't just do a project forever. And that was actually one yeah. of the things um, we we had to watch on the very first one because we we wanted to give them more and more time to uh, to improve um, the the revision games and everything. And then it took yeah. too long. And then we were yeah. late for the date that we wanted to choose for your eight uh, exhibition and everything. So you, you re that's why I'm saying you really have to make sure that you know exactly what's happening in each lesson, that okay. um, you do have the vocab they need, whether they are repeating it or just writing it in a booklet or researching it. But um, yeah, they need to have it. And, and then your next lesson has to be about something else, um, but with, with this vocab accessible. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, and, um, and we've got a couple more questions that we can uh, squeeze in. So, um, Julie, you've had your hand up for a while. Uh, do you want to unmute yourself and you can ask your question? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, sorry. Two, uh, two questions. One is just a really quick question, which is how many hours a week of French or a fortnight do your pupils in year eight or nine have? Um, uh -huh. In your eights, they have, um, and your nine, they have uh, three hours every week. Three hours a week. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> we have one okay. hour a week. Um, and the other question is, um, you would say each project is based around an essential question. Do you think of those questions in um, the target language? And can you give us an example of an essential question that you might have set for one of your projects? Yes. Of course. I'm um, sorry, I couldn't hear you really well, but um, did you ask if um, I could give you, uh, if the question was uh, in the target language, and yes. could I give an example of one, yeah. Uh, sorry? An example of uh, an essential question, I think that was. Um, yes. Well, for instance, for the first, uh, for the first one, because the, um, the question has to be um, done by the pupils as much as possible, because they might not all uh, want to do the same thing. Uh, but the first question I think, um, was, um, how can you create um, an engaging game um, report for your rights to revise what they have learned so far and achieve a level four? So it's just that's why I was saying you have to always, or they have to uh, always stick to the question because uh, what we had, for instance, is that they started to do the games and they were really good at making them have to guess words or say words or um, you know draw something according to the word, but then. You have to remind them that in the question there is this idea of level four, and if they do not include um, some challenge to say an opinion or something, their game doesn't work. For instance, um, so so the question is in English. Um, but what, for them are they to all in English? All of the different projects you did, the, the question. Oh, sorry, no. The, the questions are in English, so, so that you know when they present it, it's easy to understand for everyone. But the projects themselves, no, they should. Um, well, depending on the nature of the project. Um, it should use as much target language as possible. So if you take, um, um, so the Come Time With Me project, their, their uh, performance is all in German or in French. Um, but for instance, if you take the games, um, they were explaining the rules of the games in English, but then they were expecting, um, so year sevens were expecting the year eights to uh, use obviously target language words and sentences, but then that it would be too complicated to explain um, in, in target language. But um, if I take another one, such as um, uh, the, the, the cultural one, the one you said that was a cultural. Yes, so this one, um, I don't have the question in, in mind just now. But for instance, um, this one could have been um, in English because this one um, wasn't, you know, it wasn't focusing on the target language, more on their knowledge of. A, a speaking a target language speaking country, but it's their choice then to then say. Uh, so if they say they want to talk about the, the special food from this place, and then they can then give some example of food in the target language. But for something that's more cultural, no, it's, it's fine to do it in English because also when they have their audience, they want to make sure that you know they can enjoy them, you know, and, and understand it as well. Yeah, sure. It really depends on the nature of the project. 
And okay. and Julia, if you want a bit more um, information on kind of what essential questions might look like, I've I've just put a little post in the chat function to everyone, um, which takes you through to the Language Futures website where you see resources for pro project-based learning there. So there are some examples of projects there, which again would be kind of uh, easy to do uh, in a, inside or outside the language futures model um, and within those projects quite, uh, you could, quite a few of them you can see what the essential question was um, and in the um, handout I've got on project-based learning that kind of uh, spells out a bit more of the rationale behind why you have a, a, an essential question um, which might help a little bit as well. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and we've, we've run over by a couple of minutes, and I hope that's okay. Do feel free to leave if, if people need to. But um, hopefully I can just ask a final question from Rebecca. Uh, is that all right, Pam? Of course. Brilliant. Okay, so this is interesting because Rebecca's question really brings out the problems that um, you can face with project-based learning. So she's asked, what would a normal project-based learning lesson look like for you? I have tried project-based learning this half term and it was successful but some pupils said the lessons were too similar and a bit boring because we didn't do a massive variety of different activities as we normally would do in a normal MFL lesson. So there was a lot of reading and research but not a lot of listening or speaking and I know that's something that um, when teachers who do lots of different kind of highly personalized approaches as well as doing project-based approaches can sometimes find is that the, t the students might miss hearing from the teacher and uh, doing the kind of speaking and listening things and so yeah how, how would you address that and what, what does it look like? Well we like the, um, you know, just below that so I don't know if you can see my screen but I put the slide back um, yes you can uh, where it says special question yes. um, mm -hmm. so to do this in six lessons, uh, um, sorry, Pamela, I, um, we, you've just gone slightly quiet. I don't know. Can you move any closer to the microphone or anything? Uh, yes, I can. Is it better? Oh, yes, much better. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, so yes. Yeah, so I don't know if you see the screen, but uh, it doesn't matter mm. if you can't follow it. But uh, um, so, for instance, our first questions would be the, an introduction to the project, and I forgot to mention as well that as much as possible. Um, we try to create um, a project ourselves, or, or we can ask sometimes um, our team of motivated pupils I mentioned before uh, to create a project beforehand, um, and, and we show it, and then we explain how we got there, and um, we say there's still stuff that I'm sure that we can do better, but we will be expecting them to create their own project on the same um, essential question or um, and and we will give them the tools to get there um, and then the next lesson um, there would be so so oh, sorry the same lesson so we would say what the essential question is sorry mm -hmm. and then we would be you know for instance um, doing a mind map about all the ideas that we can have so for instance if the question is um, how can I um, how can I um, give uh, the best overview of a French-speaking country um, to, um, to create um, a brochure or something, um, then we would do some mind map and say what this project should contain, so should it be, would it be more interesting if it was on paper, should it be a website, should there be photos, what, what would the most important aspects be, and then put pupils into their groups and then, um, and then and then just make sure that they start. Then they would be given the next lesson to work with their groups, with the teachers, um, with the teacher walking around the classroom, just helping. Um, so they're just drafting it. And then, um, depending on where we are, but we, as I, like I said, where we try to stick to this um, schedule, we um, we do um, either another drafting session or we do a critique session where pupils um, do some self-assessment first and then some peer assessment and then they use the time to they use their the rest of the time to reuse the feedback and um, improve their work and the session after that um, is still on improving work um, if they're done if they finish earlier then they can compare between two groups of pupils give each other ideas uh, more ideas go and print what they have to print um, sort out some issues um, and then if everyone's ready 
then the next session will be the exhibition session. Um, so it, it depends on how long we have and like I said before, um, we, we really wish we had more time <laughs> and that's why starting at you know, the, the start of term or doing it during the term um, is, is great uh, for this, but it does clash, clash with assessments. Um, but, but yeah, it would look like this so in, in, in a few lessons. But that's, we've been following um, the, the real project um, strategy that you, meant, that you and I mentioned before. Um, yeah, so not forgetting the, the feedback sessions and then um, redrafting and then exhibition. Great, thanks very much. Um, so Rebecca, hopefully that answers your question. Um, and yeah, I think putting it in, in the context uh, of why, why you're doing it before you think about the activities, I think is probably a really useful, helpful steer. Um, well, thank, thank you very much for your time and thanks for, for everyone's questions as well. Um, I'm going to end it there. We've run over by, by a bit and a couple of people I know uh, had to quickly duck out. Um, I've got uh, thank yous all around. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to share this uh, question function uh, with you afterwards so that you can see it, Pamela, um, if you can't already. Um, and otherwise, thank you to everyone for coming and I'll uh, stop the webinar there. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.